Welcome back cave dwellers as we continue our multimedia upgrades and let's take a closer look at that real magic MPEG decoder card and as we saw earlier it's absolutely huge for comparison this card is a real magic Hollywood plus this much newer PCI card is completely dwarfed by the huge ISA card despite being much more powerful a very visible example then of Moore's law in action Let's take a closer look at the card. Rear ports are a VGA output port and a 3.5mm audio jack. Because not only is this an MPEG decoder card, it has a full blown sound card built into it. The pins at the bottom of the card here are called the feature connector. And this allows the card to interface directly with your VGA card, bypassing the system bus, allowing for a much faster exchange of data. And this may sound familiar to you. If we take a look at this modern graphics card, you'll see it has an edge connector. You would use this port to connect to a second graphics card, allowing them to share the workload and increase your power. And just like the real Magic card, it uses these connectors to bypass the system bus and allow the cards to communicate as quickly as possible. A 26 pin feature connector cable is used to connect the cards together and here they are in their final configuration as they'll look once in the case. The video output from your regular VGA card travels down the feature connector into the MPEG card where decoded MPEG is overlaid onto that image and output through the VGA port of the MPEG card. So for that reason we'll be plugging our monitor into the MPEG card. We'll first install our Trident video card followed by the Realmagic MPEG card. As you can see it's a full length 16 bit ISA card but it's not a VLB card, so it's not using the full length of that VLB port, only the ISA slot. It's then the turn of that feature connector cable to connect the two cards together. And aside from the software driver, that's our installation complete. So we'll secure the cards in with some screws and get to plugging the cables in. These are the last internal hardware upgrades of this series and our case is getting full but I can still see a couple of spare slots for future upgrades so no doubt we'll be back again soon. At the rear of the case now the VGA cable goes into the MPEG card output and we'll run a 3.5mm audio cable from the MPEG card's audio output into the lining of our sound card. This is because the sound card I have installed is better than the one on the real Magic card, so it will remain our primary audio card and relay the decoded MPEG audio through it. Hands clammy with anticipation, it's time to power on the PC and test out our new multimedia capabilities. The real Magic driver has been added to the DOS config file so it launches at startup and as you can see it successfully detects the card as a real Magic light board. So we're all ready to go. Our first test then will be a test of the CD-ROM and that game Manhunt, the first ever CD-ROM game released. This is not a game that will make use of the MPEG card and the following games will for comparison. Manhunt is a graphical point and click adventure which uses the extra capacity of the CD-ROM to present a world made up of many more screens than you could have ever achieved with a floppy disk. It also includes some very amusing digitized speech as you'll hear. Well okay, it's quite a surreal game this, it certainly lacks a uh, visual consistency in its presentation. I don't fully understand why the speech is such a low quality. Anyway, it's time to try out this MPEG card. Our first game is the real magic version of Dragon's Lair. It had to be really, didn't it? Dragon's Lair, a fantasy adventure where you become a valiant knight on a quest to rescue the fair princess from the clutches of an evil dragon. You this makes me happy. 30 frame per second MPEG-1 video playing super smooth on a 486 PC. You'd be forgiven for mistaking this for the Laserdisc original. In the mysterious caverns below the castle, your odyssey continues against the awesome... To use the real magic card, the game has to specifically support it, and they really are few and far between. 
Here's another example for you. A quest awaits. Ah, the sweepstakes winner. I've been looking forward to- No! No! It's Return to Zork, created under the technical direction of William Volk, who also created Manhole. The regular version of Zork was great, but this really does take it to another level with the crisp and smooth video. It really is a shame there wasn't more support for these cards. Real Magic includes some demo videos with the card, starting with this patriotic video of the White House. It's nice, but it's not Buckingham Palace, is it? What Real Magic give us next was wholly unexpected. Warning, not safe for work. At the beach, on a boat, and now on your computer, California girls are here. From blondes in bikinis to brunettes on roller skates, these bikini beauties will liven up your computer. Hundreds of gorgeous video clips will cascade across your screen. Just call Video Toys today at 510-848-06. Got it. No. Oh. From the White House to uh, the Playboy Mansion by the looks of it, safe to say then that our Real Magic MPEG card is working, as is our CD-ROM. Would I recommend these upgrades to anyone? Well the CD-ROM of course, that's a given. The Real Magic card? Absolutely not. I love it, but there's a reason I got it. All the glossy magazine adverts, all the promises of interactive movies that never really materialised. It was a choice made out of pure nostalgia for a piece of hardware that was always beyond my reach as a kid. And now I can say, I've got one. And ticking those boxes is, after all, why we do this crazy hobby, isn't it? Join me in the final episode where I'll be using my tried and tested method of restoring the plastics and bringing that beige colour back to its original hue. The CRT monitor this project needs and deserves will finally make an appearance. And the finished project including all of the hardware, will be showcased with some of my favourite games, and I invite you now to suggest your favourites. Leave a comment, and we'll include it in the final video. So until episode 5... Thanks for watching, cave dwellers.